this good afternoon Maz. please i need your advice i just met this guy we attended the same university though but we don't really know each other he stays in lagos and i stay in akura he says he wants to come over for a visit but he wants me to stay with him in the hotel overnight i declined but i want to know if it's a relationship red flag we just started talking but he's indicated interest in having a relationship with me can we all say it together it, it is, is a red flag, flag. <laughs> it is it is a billboard a red billboard in fact Yes, welcome to another episode of True Talk. We're so glad that you could join us for this wonderful episode. Now, this is a unique episode because it's question and answer. answer. Yay. <laughs> so we're going to be um, reading some questions out that you have sent to us, you know, in our DM and our email. So um, we're going to be answering the questions as well. So just be blessed. I'm so certain that one of the questions will just pertain to you and you can even share it with somebody else that is going through the situation of the questionnaire. All right, so we'll be getting into it. But before we get into it, let's go on this short break. Be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right, so we'll be getting into the questions proper. Question one. Good morning. I trust you are having a great day. Please, how can some deal with relationship failures and better oneself? How do you know you are ready for another relationship after coming out of a heartbreaking relationship? Thanks and have a blessed day. <laughs> no, 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 look at me. <laughs> you have so much blessed for <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Do anyone want to answer this question? Anyone? Um, okay, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> you can start, we will just support. <laughs> okay, uh, heartbreaks are very painful and hurtful. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's very important to know that you are not having a rebound. You just mm -hmm. go to heal, and healing comes with time. So that time now is, is it varies per individual. Mm -hmm. For somebody, maybe a couple of weeks or for a couple of months, but you will know in your heart when you, for example, cast your mind back. Are you still hurting? When you think about, you know, the event surrounding the relationship or the breakup, are they still bringing pain? If so, I would suggest that you heal. Allow God to heal you. Mm -hmm. Take time. There's no pressure. There's no rushing. Mm -hmm. Take time. So you don't end up, you know, transferring the pain and aggression mm -hmm. on this new person. So take mm -hmm. time to heal. And about um, how to better oneself, mm -hmm. that applies to everybody, not just even relationship breakup. You know, it's just develop yourself you can also you know prayerfully just search your heart what are the things that i i did wrong what are my flaws mm -hmm. how did i what part did i play in this breakup if there was any you know things you did that you did not do well so just search search all those things out and <laughs> ask the spirit to help you work on yourselves mm -hmm. if you have been you know lazy or you were not loving or whatever it was just prayerfully ask the holy spirit to help you mm -hmm. and about getting over relationship breakups in general um, there is no one size fits all, but all in all, you you really need God because breakups are <coughs> very very painful. They can mm -hmm. be very hurtful. So um, pray about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Take time. Don't don't be under pressure. Yeah. It's okay to cry, but don't be under pressure that I want to you know I want yes, this to over. One. Yes, mm -hmm. just take time and let your let yourself heal. Mm -hmm. um, avoid being I do. Mm -hmm. Try. Surround yourself with godly company, you know, if attending fellowships and all these things. Because idleness kind of has a way of fueling, you know, the thoughts that will just take you back into those sad moments. So avoid being idle. Find yourself being productive, doing good things and productive yeah. things. And pray for the person. Pray mm -hmm. for, you know, the hurts. Just pray for the person so that you don't hold grudges. If you have to forgive mm -hmm. the person, forgive the person, you know, and don't let any past hold you down because of the glorious future that God has. Ahead. Yes, and I would like to just add to that. Um, for this relationship failings part, I feel you, you should ask yourself what exactly caused the breakup. breakup. That maybe it's something that had to do with you or with the person, or maybe God just wanted you to, 
you know, get some space. Or maybe the person was not right for you, mm -hmm. or there was something that you could evidently see in this person's life that you know that you can't go far with this person. So you just had to break up with the person. So I feel you should just first pinpoint what exactly caused that breakup mm -hmm. on your on your you know path yeah. and then just work on it and i feel like the period between one relationship and the other and another relationship should be should be one that you give yourself to self-development mm -hmm. one that you know you know spend um understanding yourself in god understanding your purpose understanding what god has called you into you know so that you can actually have a clear view of the person you are going to walk yes. with because this person has to you know be compatible with you so that you can both fulfill destiny together mm -hmm. and i really want to believe that you are not doing trial and error mm -hmm. <laughs> because you'll just be going from one heartbreak to another mm -hmm. heartbreak and and you know you'll just be setting yourself up for that but you are you know intentional about being in a relationship that is you know intended towards marriage because you want to fulfill purpose and destiny together so that time should be for self-development yes. going for going to seminars productive seminars reading mm -hmm. reading wonderful books you know watching educative and inspirational videos and also yes i just like to add to that all right so <laughs> okay <laughs> the next question here is how will one know that his or her sins have been forgiven <laughs> I mean, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, yes. so it comes, and then so you have to believe. God has said that you know, come, let us reason together, even though your sins be as scarlet. <laughs> like, yeah. so exactly. If you confess your sins, He's faithful, faithful and just, faithful and just to forgive, to forgive you from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Yeah. So you confess, and the state of your heart matters you know you are doing it from a state of genuine repentance and you just believe once you have confessed and asked god for, for forgiveness and you are not still put, dipping your hands into yes. what you're asking for forgiveness from yes. so you believe that god has forgiven you so knowing god has forgiven you is by faith it's mm -hmm. an it's a, a, an action of faith and the devil capitalizes on many people's doubts and Very you know it brings it brings um, yeah. guilt yes. condemnation makes you feel like the worst person and the worst sinner but you have to rebuke those thoughts. You have to yeah. rebuke the, the, the devil and surround yourself with God's word. Hold yeah. fast to God's promises mm -hmm. and don't don't wallow in guilt. Yeah, mm -hmm. very true, very true. I believe you've said it all. But mm -hmm. what, let me just echo again that you should give yourself to the word of God mm -hmm. because yeah. a way to combat fear is faith, and without faith, it is impossible it's to speak to God. So just to wrap it up, number one is to have the faith that He has forgiven you mm -hmm. because you have sincerely you know, asked Ask. for forgiveness and you've received this forgiveness. So have that faith and give yourself to the word of God mm -hmm. where his promises are innumerable and it will help you mm -hmm. in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So we're going to number three. Um, number four. Number three. Number three. <laughs> I grew up in a particular church, but now I'm beginning to lose interest because it seems the word of God being preached is not as effective and I perceive dryness. I was invited to a church where, for some time now, I am beginning to bond with and like the sermons because it teaches me a lot. Now, I am, I am not certain if I should leave my old church and join the new one or not. I don't know what to do and it's making me emotional. Can you please help me out? All right. Okay. So <laughs> um, there are some factors that were not included in this question. Number one, um, it's good we understand your state are you in a family whereby you are submitted to the father in which case you have to be submissive to the authority over you mm -hmm. so you cannot you know say that no i am receiving life from somewhere mm -hmm. else so please keep your traditional church to yourself while i go to this new generational church no you're going to be literally shaming jesus in your life they wouldn't see lights in you rather they'll see a rebellious rebellion. child mm -hmm. they'll see rebellion so it's important that you pay attention to that and you know yeah so that is that is a major factor that um should have been included mm -hmm. in which case it is it is proper for you to be submissive to authority mm -hmm. and actually attend the church that your parents would love you to attend because mm -hmm. you are still it's under them even mm -hmm. though jesus was the lord of the universe the bible talked about how even when he went to the temple talking to pharisees and they were looking for him everywhere when they finally found him he said don't you not be don't you know i'll be about my father's business but then the next verse said and jesus submitted himself to them so jesus was aware of the fact that these are my parents yes. they are over me i mm -hmm. must be submissive mm -hmm. so so no matter the revelation that you're getting, it's important that you honor the authority over your life. Yes. Yes. 
And if you are older and you feel like you want to, you're on your own, it's a very simple decision. Just pray about it. Yes. Whatever God leads you to do. If He asks you mm-hmm. to leave the church, fine. If He asks you to stay, maybe He has an assignment for you. Yeah. Maybe He wants you to be a source of revival Change. or fire yeah. or anything. So just pray about it and let the Holy Spirit lead, lead you. you. Yes. Okay. All right. So moving on to question number four. Good morning, Ted. I'm crying right now as I write this. I'm 18 years old and I live with my parents. Asu is on strike and it's as though my whole life is limited. Lots of programs I'm not allowed to attend because my parents won't let me. Praying at night, my dad says I shout too much. Praying while doing house chores, my dad says the days are evil and that even our dickian doesn't pray like that. The truth is I really don't want to hold grudges against my parents, but my heart is filled with hurt and I don't want that. I don't know what to do. Please help this growing baby. Okay. So yeah. the first thing I will say is that um, the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So there's nobody that is prayer proof or too hardened for prayer to you know, change or for, for prayer to break down. Mm-hmm. I want you to intentionally pray for your parents. When mm-hmm. you lift them up in prayers and speak to the Lord that you want their heart of stone to become a heart of flesh, I truly believe in the power of prayer that something will definitely change yes. with them. Mm-hmm. And it's also important to walk wisely. You know, there's a way that um, a person can be obnoxious with their fellowship in a way that you know that, okay, everywhere is quiet. Your mother is sleeping, you now come, Father, in the name of Jesus. You don't have to do that. That was just if you raise them, I told you that you're a troublesome child. Rather, you can you can, you, you can literally be a peacemaker in the home. You can have this aura of peace with you. You're still fellowshipping with the Lord. You don't have to shout to, you know, get access to the throne room of heaven. So it's important that you also walk circumspectly and wisely as well. But then in all in all, pray for your parents, and I believe that the Lord will touch them. Amen. 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 Good evening, great women of God. May the Lord continue to expand your ministry. Please, I want to ask that is it okay for a Christian to listen to worldly music? Because some youth would say you don't know what is trending now. Thank you and God bless <laughs> you. <laughs> Interestingly, there was an episode that Dusha did, Dusha yes, yes, did my key, key <laughs> on um, listening to secular, secular music. music. Um, yeah. We'll put the link in the description mm-hmm. box below. Hello. Okay, so to answer this, to just summarize the answer, basically. So when we talk about worldly music, worldly music promotes lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. And as a Christian, you shouldn't be, you know, dabbling into these things. So you are listening to a song and you keep, you know, listening to it. It would be, you know, bringing up certain things in your heart that you shouldn't because music does not need permission to gain access into you so yes it is not right for a christian to listen to worldly music especially those that what lost like the three things i've mentioned so guard your heart with all diligence for out of this flows the issues of life so and the bible has said meditate on i mean on these things and this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth and there, there, there's you know there's a broad scope of godly music that is out there that you can listen to so instead of Focusing on the worldly one, why not focus on the ones that will feed your spirit? <laughs> yeah, focus on the ones that will feed your spirit and build your spirit, mm. man. And someone once said that if you are doing devotion mm-hmm. and that worldly music is playing, can that devotion still flow? Mm-hmm. But we look feel like something is polluting the song. So that check, that's a check. So whatever mm-hmm. you know, it, it cannot feel okay listening to in God's yeah. presence. Mm-hmm. You are always in God's presence, even when you are walking on the street. So you shouldn't pollute yourself with that. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Next question. Yes. Okay. Next question. Um, my question is, I am 15 years old, got baptized last year to wash my sins and be born again. But I found myself back to my vomit every time. I found myself back to my vomit. Anytime I watch True Talk, you always emphasize the place of the Holy Spirit and intimacy with him. I don't know what to do. I also want to be in a relationship with God and be free from sin. Mm. So after being born again, after um, accepting Jesus into your life, there's growth. Mm -hmm. No one says that immediately you give your life to Christ, the sinful desires Mm. all all evaporate. Exactly. So there's a struggle between the flesh and Mm -hmm. the spirit. But what matters most is you being... Um, allowing the Holy Spirit, allowing God to help you fight mm-hmm. this battle. Don't do it by your power. Don't mm-hmm. think, oh, I'm not born again, so 
I, I cannot, I cannot mm. have any feeling or desire to sin. Mm. No, the desires may come, the feelings may come, but just trust the Holy Spirit to help you combat them. And if for any reason you fall, don't remain on that fallen state. Arise, dust off the sin, mm. ask for forgiveness, and receive grace to move, to keep living a righteous life. I'm saying you come boldly before the throne of grace to ask for mercy and help so you just need to ask god for the grace constantly don't ask for it once and say oh god i asked for grace yesterday and now i call it ask again god will not tired of you asking keep asking for the grace keep fighting that battle keep you know pressing in to the in the place of prayer and the word of god and god is going to help you overcome yeah. and, and, then, uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> okay um the bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind <laughs> <laughs> we have the same mind. <laughs> I was just thinking of that scripture. <laughs> so, <laughs> so be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So even after giving your life to Christ, there needs to be a renewing of your mind that happens. Yeah. And this happens through the word of God. So you need to also focus on, you know, studying the word. You mentioned, the person mentioned that they want to, you know, develop that relationship with God. It's mm -hmm. the, the word of God is how we know God mm -hmm. because it's literally the blueprint of how to, you know, know God. So you need to focus, study the word of God, study the word of God, renew your mind with the word of God, by, you know, pray, spending time in the presence of God. I mean, to get to know somebody and to please the person, you have to spend time mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. So you need to spend more time with God. That is by studying the word and by praying. Yes. And then just to quickly... Choke my own side that <laughs> <laughs> is that I it it seems as though um you're very sin conscious. I mean this per this this person and when someone is sin conscious, I've been in that state when I was a very young girl. It was it was rather I don't want to sin so that I won't be left behind that all my parents will disappear and then <laughs> But so I was so sin conscious that I don't want to sin, I don't want to so you, even if I step on I was like sorry, sorry. <laughs> so an aunt <laughs> I was so sin conscious and I was so fearful and I was so so if I told I now for maybe out of anger I just speak cash there, I'll be so I'll feel so bad. Mm. I'll I'll feel so you know i'll feel literally guilt stricken and everything so i feel like if you are if you are sin conscious you will just notice how you are easily falling into that mm -hmm. sin day in there but then when you focus on what you know tolu said about your relationship with god you realize how it's just it, it's natural for you to just please him for you to do away from sin because you are having a sweet relationship with your father and then you are also renewing your mind so there is a transformation process going on without you even being actively conscious of this that you are now almost like you've like tied your hands by yourself so it's very important that you focus on that oh, rather than okay. being so sin conscious okay. yeah okay all right, so the next question we have here is this. Good afternoon, Maz. Please, I need your advice. I just met this guy. We attended the same university, though, but we don't really know each other. He stays in Lagos and I stay in Akure. He says he wants to come over for a visit, but he wants me to stay with him in the hotel overnight. I declined, but I want to know if it's a relationship red flag. We just started talking, but he's indicated interest in having a relationship with me. Can we all say it together? It, it is, is a red, red flag. flag. It, <laughs> is. it is. A billboard, a red billboard, in fact. Please, if anybody is trying to have access to your personal um, places without being your husband, please, or your wife, it's a red flag. It is. Such, you're, not even, you're not even in a relationship. You're not in a relationship. Even if you were, she's wrong, but you're not in a relationship. Yeah. So, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like in the outer court. No, in the Bible, there's outer court. There's mm -hmm. inner, inner, inner court, court and there's and the holy, holy of holies. Holy, holy, holy of holies for your husband. Inner court, it's not yet husband place, but yeah, you know, you're, you're talking intimate discussions, you know, yeah, you're, you're planning for the But then outer court, hmm. I think it's the outer of outers <laughs> because he's, he's not even, you know, in that space at all. Yeah. So please, it is a massive red flag. And even if you are in a relationship with somebody, you shouldn't let that person have that much access to you, yes. you know, to spend overnight. No, 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 that space is for your husband, it's for, you know, your home. So please, it's a very huge red flag. Yeah. Simple answer. So I'd love to ask a quick personal question. Is it okay to marry a man younger than me? We are both compatible and rooted in Christ as the center of our relationship. Those are the most important things. You being rooted in Christ, you being compatible. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That is more, much more important. As they say, age is a number. But aside, been, aside that, um, the questions you have to ask yourself is, is he feeling intimidated or inferior because mm -hmm. of the age? Mm -hmm. yes. Are you feeling superior because of the age. Age, it may be a number, but the truth is that some people that carry age on their head. So the question here are those questions you answer. And that being said, what you should do is 
swap ages like mommy gloria said <laughs> let him take up the age you have and you take the age he has in the sense that you are submitting to him and he's your head if that is if god mm-hmm. is leading to that relationship mm-hmm. okay um the next question says i'll be writing my final my final year exams as a secondary school student but i just keep having this thought that i'm going to fail both exams i don't know how to stop this feeling please what can i do um, I think we did a, a recent, yeah, a recent talk, talk on thoughts. On thought, so we would really encourage you. We we'll put it in the link below as well. So yes. we would really Please encourage watch. you to listen to that. Mm-hmm. It really helps because yeah. the truth is, um, thoughts would always come. Just like the, the popular saying that it, you can't avoid the bird from flying over your head, but you can avoid it from perching on your head. So the same thing as this thought comes, and then the best way to combat negative thoughts is with the word of God. So you need to get scriptures that, you know, combat these negative thoughts that are coming and just believe and trust the, the power of the Holy Spirit in you. If, if you don't trust in your own capability, then trust in the Holy Spirit that is with you. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And then you, and the Bible says, you shall be the head and not the tail. So just get those scriptures. So when those thoughts come, you combat it with those scriptures and also prepare effectively for your exams because mm-hmm. God is not a magician. If you have not read or studied, you won't have anything to write down. So also prepare, it's study, exactly. You. <laughs> so do your own part by studying and preparing yourself for the exam and then leave the rest of the Holy Spirit to do, the, to do his own part as well. Mm-hmm. So I believe that answers the question. Yes. We have come to the end of this, of this question and answer <laughs> session. I'm pretty yeah. sure we're going to have another one later. But thank yeah. you so much for your honest questions. And I really mm-hmm. hope you have been blessed and you have yeah. received mm-hmm. your answer in one form or the other. God bless you abundantly. Mm-hmm. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this session. Thank we you, appreciate you for the opportunity to minister to your children. Thank, thank you, you for our lovely viewers. We thank, thank you for you, giving Lord. us the grace, Father, to even be here asking these questions. We thank you for utterance. We thank you for your strength and the grace that you are giving unto us, Father, to effectively do what we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Father, we ask you for more grace. We ask you for more strength, more ability, Father, to stand firm in our walk with you. We rebuke every spirit of fear. We rebuke mm-hmm. every spirit of like a physical attitude towards our relationship with you. Mm-hmm. We ask you, Father, that you help us to uphold your word and see it as bread that we cannot live without. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So you can just go ahead and send your questions to our DM on Instagram. You can follow us, True Talk with Ted. And you can send it as well to our email. To talk with Ted at, at gmail.com. Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Have a lovely day. Till next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.